My skin is black. What you oh. looking My at? My skin yeah. is black. I feel what so good to be black right now. Is black. <laughs> Welcome to episode 163 of the Black in Fashion Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And today's episode, I am by myself again. And I'm going to be going over a couple different things. So first of all, before I get into anything, I want to say... I want the Crazy Client Chronicles to be lit. And because I want it to be lit, I need y'all to send in your stories. Like, share your stories for sure. Um, If you check out the link in our bio, there's a guest request form up there too. So I love for any creatives and fashion people, or if you want to come on the podcast, to go ahead and click that link and tell us a little bit about yourself. And then, of course, if you're aligned with our consumers and our audience, then we will absolutely add you to the podcast. We're also bringing back the um, Black in Fashion directory so that we have on our website how to find uh, black fashion brands and where to shop with them as well so you could also click the link in our bio and fill out the entry to the directory form so that we can go ahead and add you as well now this episode is gonna be short and sweet honey okay so i am here just to share another crazy client crazy client chronicle story okay so with this one um we just gonna hop right into it okay all right here we go so um, in my process of um, product development, we go through several stages, okay? So we go through um, fabric sourcing. Well, sketches is first. Then we go through fabric sourcing. Then we go through pattern making, sample making, fitting, all of this stuff. So um, this is like when I first opened up my studio. We were in the process of working on someone's clothing line. Um, and, you know, we don't guarantee time frames or anything like that. It's in our contracts. It's on our website. It's on our invoice. It's literally listed everywhere. We give you estimates. And the reason being is because in design, anything can change. Fabric may take too long to come in. You might change the design. We do everything by hand. So having to go back and fix patterns and stuff like that. So um, sometimes, you know, the process can be a long one. But you know that from the beginning, you know. So with this particular lady, um, she wanted her pieces like right away. And we, you know, we explained like, hey, that's not realistic. Like that's not um, something that is actually going to, you know, work or whatever. And then also keep in mind, you're not our only client. We have several clients and we have people that are ahead of you as well. So she gets mad and she says, and she, you know, tells me that she's going to come pick up her stuff. And I'm like, well, your stuff isn't finished yet. So, like, you can't come pick it up yet. Like, we'll let you know when it's done, and then you can come pick it up. We give her, like, a time frame or whatnot, okay? So, we're all, I think it was around the end of the day. This is a couple, maybe a week or so after the initial conversation. She shows up with the police. And I didn't really get it. Cause I'm just like, well, well, what, why would she call the police? You know? So the police is now asking me about the process and I'm showing them the contract, showing them like what we do and stuff like that. But mind you, she's like, she stole my stuff and she has my clothes. And I was just like, it's unfinished. Like it's not done for me. I'm always going to complete my contractual obligation to you. I'm not going to turn something over to you if it's not complete yet. So it was still in process. Like the items are being sewn, but they're not completely sewn. They still need finishes. They still need zippers, stuff like that. But she just wants her stuff now. So then I was just like, okay, um, well, in that case, then I'm going to have to make like a little agreement for like you to sign a release form to take it as is because you ain't finna try to sue me later. So I create the release form or whatever. She said she's not going to sign it. I'm like, well, if you're not going to sign it, then I'm not giving you nothing because technically the merchandise or whatever is not finished. So I'll finish it. Then she's like, no, I want it now. I'm like, okay. So now the police is there and the police is getting irritated because they just feel like well, this is a civil matter. Why are we here anyway? And when I tell y'all this lady looked like... If anybody ever seen Holiday Heart, it looked like Wanda. She looked like Wanda in the last scene when she's like, oh, I got the bike. I got the bike. Like, she looked crazy, like a nest sitting on top of her head. So I already know the police is looking at this lady like, what the fuck is going on here? And, of course, you know, I'm, I put on my white girl voice. I ain't going to lie to y'all, okay? <laughs> I put on my white girl voice and I started like cold switching real quick. It was like, well, I run a, um, a very lucrative business here. A very, a very, uh, I don't even remember what I said. This is so long ago, but I know I was just spitting it out. Like, you know, I'm a businesswoman. I do follow my order of operations and then we have our policies and we have our procedures and this is this and this is that, you know? So, you know, they understand like I'm, I'm educated, I'm professional, like, and I'm trying to be professional with her. I don't really know why she called y'all, but like, I don't have a problem giving her her merchandise as is, but she going to sign this form first. So she's still screaming and yelling or whatever like that. And I'm sitting there chilling. 
because I'm just like, I don't even understand why we're even going through this. Like, you asked for a service. We did the service. We laid out what it was going to look like from day one. So you popping up here with the police and calling me a thief. Girl, if I get called, look, y'all. <laughs> if I get called, and I think if y'all look on Google, like, y'all should look on Google. Just because, just because the shit is actually funny. On Google, I am a thief. I am a fraud. Um, I'm a con artist. Um, I'm a scam. I'm a scammer. You, you name it. I'm that. I have been called so many different names and so many different things. And, you know, it used to bother me because it's like, damn, all I'm trying to do is like help people or whatever. But the people that write these things or whatever, they only telling like half of the story and they're not uh, acknowledging their part and what they did in what was going on. So nowadays I, I look at them things um, like when they come in, like, oh, you have a new review. And I look at it and then it literally rolls off my shoulder. Like I don't even care no more. So with this lady, I forgot all the different names she called me too. Like, I don't even know. Like, I don't care actually. So I, we end up being in like the hallway because I said that she wasn't welcome in my studio. I got a whole bunch of employees in there. That's another thing. I never want to show a certain level. I want to show a certain level of professionalism and decorum in front of those. And the reason why I pushed them out of the studio and made it and moved everything over to the hallway is because I almost got real Chicago on them. Like at the end of the day, don't we're not going to forget where I'm from and how I move, okay? And I don't ever, ever, ever want to be like that. But sometimes if you got to check somebody, you got to check somebody. And that's why I didn't want to do that. And I never want to do that in front of my team or my employees because that's just not who I am like I'm not finna be out here fighting people and stuff like that's just not it you know so moved it over to the hallway just in case she got too irate you know I just didn't want to you know change the morale of the team so finally the lady signed off on it or whatever and she walked away but it's just like you went through all that you know and like and the funny part was that like we were all in the studio when it happened like me and my team one of my team employees was leaving she must have did a sideline or like three people come running in through the door I think it was two of them it was like she outside with the policia and it was just so funny that we just could not stop laughing because it's just like people really out here calling the cops on us it's just like yo we can't make this shit up like I want to tell y'all so bad we making clothes we ain't carrying cancer it is not that deep. Like, life goes on. I love creation, and I love clothes and all that stuff, but I ain't about to act no damn fool about them. The fashion industry ain't going nowhere. It's going to always be here. It's going to always be around. So what if you didn't get a piece when you were supposed to get it? Like, does it really matter? Just be open and honest about what's, like, over going on. I tell people, this is the time frame. It could go longer than that. It could go shorter than that. It just depends. Everybody is different. But y'all be holding yourself to these unrealistic deadlines to put something out. And honestly, as a new brand, you don't really sell that much in the beginning anyway. It's best for you to take your time anyway and make sure that you didn't cross your T's and dot at all your I's. So I hope that that story was... I don't know if it was entertaining. Honestly, I don't know what it was. But the whole point of Crazy Client Chronicles is for you to weigh in on it. So if there's anything you guys thought I could have done differently, um, I definitely do vet my clients more now, you know, and figure out if they're crazy. I try to figure that out in the consultation. And that's another reason why you got to pay for that consultation because I damn near need to do a psyche eval on you to see whether you're going to be a very good client or you're going to be a problematic client. But um, I say all that to say that uh, don't let, things that other people say and I do think the reviews are great don't get me wrong but I very rarely as a consumer I very rarely look at people's reviews and I know that some people swear by reviews but I just feel that every person's experience with someone is different so I don't like reading reviews as much because it's like I need to experience something for myself I need to see because my experiences and your experience can be completely different there's people who out there who are like oh my god I need to sewed up I love her and then there's people on google talking about so she's a fraud and she's a scammer you know like I said everybody's experience is different so I would never rely heavenly he like heav heavily oh my accent jack heavily on reviews because everybody's experience is just different you know so i hope that was helpful i hope that you got some insight there i hope it you know maybe turned something on in your brain and made it click or whatever and of course weigh in on the comments on my crazy client chronicles and i'll be back with more stories as i always say guys stay black peace out